Again, well, today I'm getting ready for paint. I picked up this new body here. So that are so you can have a look. Uh, it's the it's from my Hyper 10. It's a Ford Raptor SVT. Nice looking body. You can see all the gold color here. This is what you got to do. Essentially, they got the um, the overspray film on the outside, so you can draw on it. When you peel it off, it's it's gone. So. I just marked out kind of a rough area of the spots that I'll be cutting out of the mask. I'll be spraying all the gold stuff black first. Um, so that's the reasoning behind that. So now you can see I've already put a couple coats on. It dries clear. So you want to leave it for like a good 12 hours to dry between coats. I'm going for three coats because I want it to be very well protected this time. Um, it's going to be a nice paint job. Just you know, it's all in the details, right? Take your time, and mess. You can see how it dries pretty thin. Uh, then they say to just score it along the edge. Don't press hard with the hobby knife, and you can just kind of peel it off. So I'm going to go ahead and coat the rest of the body up. And there you have it. So it doesn't take very long. Uh, this is like my third coat now, so it's fairly covered. Um, but they say the thicker you put it on, the easier it is to peel off. Like, the stuff does dry pretty thin, and I'm sure I'm using way more than I need to, uh, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. I went through a whole can of this, and, you know, you should be able to get more than a body out of one of these, but... So they say, at the hobby shop, I did three really thick coats on here. Uh, but this is my first time using it, the fast mask with the liquid mask. Um, but i got to say, if it's... Anything as good as they say it is, I'm sure my uh, paint job will come out a lot better than the last ones I did. So now I'm going to let this sit overnight, actually, uh, until it dries. It'll dry completely clear again. The body will essentially look like this. Uh, and then I will start using a hobby knife and working around all the sections that I've colored uh, to peel it all out of there. So I'll keep you apprised along the way. Hey guys. Welcome back here. Well, so I've got this all masked up now. I've got two coats dried. This is just kind of the third coat now, um, which is kind of just doubled up in the areas that I'll be peeling out. So um, you want it thick. You don't want to just mask up to the areas you're painting and then try and cut it out. You want to mask everything, full coverage, so that when you do cut it out, it peels out nicely and you're not fighting with it, trying to get little pieces and stuff like that. So. Two full good coats across the whole body, and then I did a third one just around the spots in which I'll be cutting out first, the black. So you go around the outside, it has overspray film, right? And I just went with a sharp um, permanent marker and went around and outlined the areas which I'll be cutting out. Initially I did it with a gold marker, but I decided uh, it wasn't quite precise enough. So I went around with the black marker and you can get everything a little bit more precise anyway. So I'm going to let this dry. You can also use a hair dryer to speed it up. And then I'm going to spray my black first. Dark color goes first. Then I go with my main color. Once, that, once the black's done, several coats, peel off the rest of the mask. And then we go with the main color. In my case, it's going to be a fluorescent yellow. Um, if, it, if you're going to go with a fluorescent color, pick up two cans. Um, the lighter colors are harder to get them to brighten up and then once those are dried um, I like to put on a backing coat this is specifically made for fluorescent paints it's a f white fluorescent cover coat is what it says there you go so it's meant to just is a backing color uh, and it'll make those colors just pop way brighter I've used it before on other uh, bodies and it really does make the paint pop a lot brighter especially with the fluorescent colors like it's made for it right for a reason so, hope this helped. I'm going to go ahead and start painting here, and I will keep you updated along the way. Okay, so, here we are. I've gotten all the mask cut and pulled out now. And I've cleaned everything. This is probably one of the most important steps before you spray, is to take, um, I use like a 70% or higher uh, alcohol, and clean the inside and make sure it is completely dry. The alcohol will evaporate. The, the higher percentage it is, the less residue and stuff it will leave because it, it'll all evaporate. So you can see it's all reflecting nicely 
in where the areas that are cut off. I go around with Q-tips actually is what I did. And I'll get them wet. I have this alcohol spray bottle here. These are handy. But when I go around and clean them, when I'm done, they're squeaky clean. Every one. Which makes me know there's no residue underneath. So I went around this body already probably two, three times to make sure it's absolutely clean. So I'm going to go outside, let it sit in the sun for a minute, just let the rest of the alcohol evaporate, and then I'm going to start spraying my black. So really make sure you shake up your cans good. I'm just using a pack here. This is uh, Outlaw Black. Nothing fancy, just black. And uh, yeah, shake it up really good. I know when I got this can, it had obviously been sitting for a while because it took me a couple good shakes just to get the ball to break loose inside. So make sure you shake it up good. Uh, if the paint's not mixed properly, that can cause big problems as well. My spray booth here. So basically, yeah, that's it. Um, you want to spray, you know, 20, 30 centimeters away, it says. So keep it a good distance and light coats. Like that's my first coat there. And that's it. I'm not going any heavier than that. I'll let that fully dry. And uh, I'll come back and hit it again and again and again and again. So just do light coats and you'll get a better product. You don't want it to build up really thick in the troughs um, as then the paint can crack out. So just do light coats and take your time. Okay, so thanks again. And uh, yeah, I'll show you the product when we're all finished up here. Okay, so here we are, pretty much ready for the final color. I just want to emphasize that this is probably the most important stage now, like the masking and all the prep work is really what makes your paint job shine. So, what um, I recommend here is to take some alcohol, a good 70% or higher, and go around the entire body and clean it a good two or three times. You want to make sure that there is no residue underneath. And I, a good rule of thumb is, like I said, I like mine squeaky clean. You should be able to have that sound when you're done. And you know, there's no oily residue or anything underneath of your paint, which can cause it to flake or crack off later. Also, a compressor to blow out all the little paint chips is almost mandatory. You can't get them all out. Like they're almost like they're like they're negatively charged or something and the body's positively charged or like magnetic so I use a good high pressure um, compressor to blow it out and yeah wipe it down really good and go to town so I will start my final color here which is my Tamiya always all my all my trucks actually have been Tamiya paints mine is the Pactra which is the black here but for the most part I have trouble finding any other kinds of paints here in Canada I really like to get some of that spastics, but they don't carry it. It's banned in Canada for some reason. So I cannot get it. Just make sure that it says PS, polycarbonate. It needs to be polycarbonate paint. Uh, that is for Lexan. Um, do not get the plastic paint. There's another kind of Tamiya color paint that is totally wrong. And it will basically just fall off if you use it. So make sure you pay attention to that. Light, light coat. Keep it back a good 25, 30 centimeters and light coats like I'll probably do 10 coats on this truck and then when you're done you don't got to get full coverage either. especially with light colors you use a backing coat which brightens up the color a lot so don't just pack it on there and have paint running off everywhere just to get coverage it'll look great at the end uh, once you put your backing coat on there so now I'm gonna go ahead and put my window masks on and start to spray And here she is, on the truck, all painted up. I haven't pulled the window masks yet, um, but I'm going to very soon. Just thought I'd put up this last little video here for you on this paint series that I've done. And yeah, hopefully you found it somewhat informative. I know I am not an expert at this by any means. I am a complete rookie. This is like maybe the fourth body I've painted. And I'm getting better every time. I'm learning more every time. Now, this is my first time using the liquid mask, and I have to say, go this way. Uh, this is the first one I've ever done with liquid mask, and it came out not bad. You know, a lot better than with paint. There's one spot where I messed up, 
Um, and it was right here, and it was my own damn fault. I did a little trick where I used marker. To, I had a little bad line down here, and I touched it up, and I cleaned it out, um, and I didn't see this. Ah, it makes me so mad because it's underneath the paint. Nothing I can do. Maybe I'll put stickers on here or something, but that's pretty much it. The rest came out really good. The roll bars, all the lines, they came out crisp and clean. A very little paint bleed, a little tiny bit along the windows here. This is going to peel out, so you're not going to see it anyway, but it'll, it, you know, it looks pretty decent. Um, one thing I did have to do was just modify the body a little bit, just because of the way it sit. I didn't really like it. And I also created my truck a little bit. This is the, the new race rig I built for my sons. I needed something to kind of budget. And I went, uh, picked up a used Hyper 10. Short course SC. Uh, came with, loaded with all the STRC upgrades and uh, put the T-bone bumpers on it. As that's pretty much mandatory. It's the Tim Bump uh, 2.0 chassis. 10 shock motor, hobby wing 2.1 sensor speed control. It's a pretty good little little setup right now. It's not a rocket ship, but it's very controllable power and it is pretty good. It's it's a lot of fun on the track. So here we are. Just thought I'd show uh, the final video here of my paint job. I'm just going through. Now you can see I did the backing coat, which was white, uh, and then I go around. Basically, I drilled my, my body holes. I can't recall what size that is. Let me see here. Let's just put that back over. Set that on there for now. It was a 15 64 bit, is what I'm using uh, to drill my body holes, and it's a perfect fit. Also, um, the rear wings here have to go on still so I'm sanding these up basically I used my Dremel to do it all I marked it out I also left the body a little bit long I left that little bit there because I, I like I don't like uh, to see underneath the chassis when it's on there I don't want to see the nerf bars and stuff so I left it a little bit long but that's just personal preference and I'm gonna sand these up essentially and these go try and get this side for you to show you kind of like this this isn't sanded up at all yet, but it kind of sits right in there like that. And a little number plate and all that. So I'm going to finish that up mounted. But it came with all the hardware. ProLine's pretty awesome for that. Um, except they're blue, so I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do here. I'll probably just go pick up some new screws, or I'll just spray them with some Easy Off and deanodize them, or save them for something else. That blue could go good on my other truck, so maybe I'll save that. But they included eight screws and eight of the lock of plastic lock washers uh, to mount them all, which is pretty handy. So I thank you guys for watching. Um, hope you found it a little bit informative. Another trick that I usually do on these bodies too, when they get a little bit beat up, I'm not going to do it now because this truck I'm going for weight. I want to keep it light, and this body is very light as it is. Um, but uh, this one, which is my other race body, for my other truck, it's beat up pretty bad. It's been repainted and, you know, tweaked out and whatever. So I sprayed it now. Um, it's actually Rhino Liner, Bed Liner. And it comes out like with, with a hard kind of surface, but it's still flexible. And man, does it add a lot of strength to the body. I picked this up here. It's uh, this Rocker Guard is what it is. Premium rubberized rocker guard. And man, you know, maybe 10 bucks for the can or something like that. Barely use any of it. So I use, I liquid masked the windows out on the front one there, and then I left it. I actually like the black ones on the side, so I just left it like that. But it actually does a lot um, to toughen it up, and it can protect your paint job too, because now if you scratch it, you know, you're not going to scratch the paint, you're going to scratch the rhino liner. So that's another thing too. Also, when you're dremeling out the body to get your final paint, you know, get your final placement and whatnot, you want to be really careful with the dremel. Like I almost had an accident right there where I slipped and think fully that it didn't go through. Um, but I got quite a few coats on here. I got two cans of 
the yellow also some black which I used to, to do the black and then I did my full can of backing coat but I did them really light even coverage no pooling anywhere you don't want any build up in the troughs um, you want to just be light like professional man um, also Hobby King has airbrushes on which I'm looking at maybe getting one 20 bucks what I was looking at the hobby store around here and they want a hundred over a hundred bucks for a decent set and you can get a double action one for like 25 bucks on hobbyking.com so I don't know how they do it but their prices are just unreal so the last thing I got to do here is just um, I'm gonna cut out a little bit of the body in the back which kind of scares me a little bit but I got to do it uh, just for airflow so I'm just going to basically just take this out along there and I'm going to use a scoop bit um, I picked up uh, an attachment set for my Dremel super cheap at the local hardware store uh, Canadian Tire and you just keep an eye out for stuff like this to come up on sale you know it's cheap stuff right it's not you know they, they try and sell this stuff for like 50 bucks you're like yeah right like I'm going to pay that um, and I just waited, it came up on sale, they sold it for $9.99. Well, there you go, that's a little better. And the whole reason is just these cutoff wheels, the decent fiberglass reinforced wheels will cost you, you know, six bucks for five of them anyway. Um, this whole kit, 300 pieces, all the sanding stuff, the grinding stones, polishing attachments, polishing compound, all the got two big things, the sanding discs, all kinds of different things in here, man. Yeah, plastic polishing wheels as well and all the drill bits and mandrels and diamond these are all diamond tipped bits uh, the collets so I got $9.99 so keep an eye out for stuff like that to go on sale it's well worth it to pick it up this Dremel as well you know people think oh Dremel so much money and they are like they're a legitimate Dremel brand you know you can spend eighty hundred dollars just on a basic unit Whereas I went, uh, if you're from Canada or in the States, you got Home Depot and stuff. And there's so many different alternative brands. Uh, Canada, we got Canadian Tire and we got Mastercraft. Mastercraft's a quality brand. You can walk into any Canadian Tire if I have any problems with this guy and just swap it out. It'll give me a brand new one, no receipt needed. Uh, and it's got, I think it's got a lifetime warranty. At least, I'm pretty sure it's a two year replacement or something. But it's a very nice Dremel. And I paid, I think it was $29.99. I think it was $30 or $39.99 with a case and an attachment set and all that so keep an eye out for those to go on sale and you can definitely score a quality unit for a lot cheaper than you might think okay so thanks a lot for watching guys um, keep an eye out I got lots of stuff happening here in the next month or two uh, also if you'd like to see any videos feel free to leave comments and uh, definitely I can get to those for you so I'll talk to you later guys